Okay, we'll begin our demo now with a Modbus RTU and a DX, using a DX2000 recorder and a uh, Yokogawa UT Advanced controller. Uh, the controller here has uh, on the back of it a little uh, simulator, a process simulator that allows it to uh, react as if it was connected to an oven. But you can see the connection here for our Modbus um, RTU is a RS-45 connection, which we just have a two-wire connection with the two jumpers going down from the send to receive. And this cable is uh, connected to the back of the recorder, which uh, also has uh, jumpers going from the send to receive side on the uh, RS-45 connection. And in the controller, we have uh, configuration settings. Uh, I have to press two buttons at once to get into the menu. But uh, okay, so now we're going to go over to the 45 menu and see that it's set for Modbus RTU. The bit rate, the baud rate is set for 9600 baud. Uh, the um, parity setting is none, the stop bits is one, and the data length is set for eight. And it has a unit address of three. And that's it. So we can take that back to its main menu. And in the main, uh, main display we see the actual process temperature it's reading here and the set point on the bottom of the display. And we can change that set point, and you'll see the uh, simulator changing and the, uh, the temperature responding on the top part of the display. So, now that information is being transmitted to the DX2000 recorder, and in the recorder we have similar settings. Uh, those settings are in the basic setting menu. and under the communication serial menu. And we'll first look at the uh, Modbus basic settings. And here we see the 9600 baud rate, the eight bit data length, uh, no parity. There's also handshaking, which is not really used in uh, 45. Uh, we have the uh, address, and that's the address of the recorder, is an address one and it's set for the protocol of Modbus Master. And under the Modbus settings, Modbus, Modbus Master settings, we find a basic setting menu. Uh, and we're in the Modbus Master basic settings. And uh, we see the read cycle here is one second. The timeout is one second, and that means that if the recorder sends a mass, the, the Modbus master sends a command to the slave. It will wait one second for a response, and if it doesn't get a response, it'll try again. And in this case, it's set for four retries, and uh, with an interblock delay of 45 milliseconds. And then, if it fails after four retries, it will wait one minute and try again. Now, each manufacturer's devices going to have slightly different settings in their uh, Modbus. That's, that's up to the manufacturer what settings they put in there, but you'll have something similar to that. In our Modbus Master command settings, we see that we have a total of 16 different commands that we can choose. We're on the first page, so we're only seeing commands 1 through 8. <clears throat> and the first command that we have here, the command uh, is a RM, which is read math, uh, reads into the math, using a math statement. Uh, and the first register is C8, that's communication registers, C8, and the last one is C8, that means we're only going to read in one register value. The uh, Modbus address that we're going to be reading from is address 3, and remember that was the address of the controller. And we're going to read from register 42003 in the controller. And the type of data that we're going to look for is the integer 16.
And those are all the settings for Modbus RTU in the controller. Now let's go back and look at the values that we're seeing. The, the recorder has to restart when you exit that menu. So we come on here and we see that it's, it's reading 550, but the controller is showing a value of 560. And the reason is, you'll see the red mark up here at the top. That means it's, the recorder's not actually running because we had to stop it when we went into the basic setting mode. So we start the recorder back again, and now it's reading a live value. And if we come and change our set point we'll see that the value on the top line changing and the value on the on the recorder is following along but there's a little bit of a dis delay because remember the recorder is only reading once a second so it follows behind just a little bit because of that time delay Okay, now we're going to look at the uh, Modbus TCP using a Yokogawa GX20 recorder and a different Yokogawa UT Advanced controller. And uh, in this case, we're looking for Modbus RT, uh, TCP. So we're going to go into the controller and look for the Ethernet settings. So we'll have to get in the menu for Ethernet. So here's Ethernet settings. And it has some settings at the top because, uh, because of uh, Modbus RTU. But when we get down to the actual Ethernet setting here, we, we see that the first group of numbers in the Ethernet address is 192. Uh, 168, 0, and 27. And we see that the, the, mod, uh, the net mask setting is 255, 255, 0, and 0. Uh, and uh, there's nothing set in the uh, default gateway. So those are the Ethernet settings that are set into the controller. And this controller doesn't have a simulator on it, it just has a thermocouple on the back. And if you reach up and grab that thermocouple, you can see it change the temperature, and then the temperature will come back to room temperature. <coughs> In the recorder, we're going to go into the configuration menu, and you go to settings, and we're going to come down to communications Ethernet settings. And we're going to come down to Modbus Client Setting. And we're going to check the basic settings first. And we find that we have turned on the Modbus Client function. We've set the interval for one second. So that again, we're going to scan once a second. We've set the wait time, in this case, for five seconds. Uh, that means it's going to wait five seconds if we have a failure of communications. And it has another couple of different settings here. This one has a keep connected, keep connection setting, and a connection timeout setting. Those are, uh, uh, is, again, things that are specific to Yokogawa's configuration, and uh, other companies may have different settings in their menus or different names for similar functions. Um, in the uh, server, I'll go back in the Modbus server settings menu. We have a server number one, so you can have multiple servers. In fact, you can, you can see here we have a choice of up to 16 different servers. And uh, the server name, in fact, is just the IP address of the controller. Remember, it was 192.168.0.27. And the port number is 502. And the Modbus command, command number one, is a read command from server number one going to unit number one. And the data type is integer 16. The register is the same register we had on the other recorders, 42003. We're going to be reading the PV value. And uh, we're going to go take that into a communications channel. And the channel number is 
1, and the last channel is 1, so we're only going to be reading one register. Okay, and uh, we didn't look at the, uh, the basic settings for the IP address, so let's back up and get that. Uh, the uh, communication Ethernet basic settings shows you the, uh, uh, the obtain IP address automatically is turned off because we're going to manually give it an IP address. We give it an IP address of 192.168.0.7. The uh, subnet masks, 255-255-00. The default gateway and the DNS server and the secondary DNS server can all be zeros because we're not using those. So now we see all of the settings that were made there. Now one more thing uh, that has to be done here is to set up the communications channel because remember we were reading this in its communication channel number one. So we look at channel number one and we see that it's turned on it has one decimal place, and a span is zero to a thousand. And if we go back and exit from this to our normal display, we'll see that there are actually two channels showing on the display. One is that communications channel that we just looked at. The second one is this direct input, which is another thermocouple that's connected directly to the recorder. And you can see that one respond when I grab it with my fingers. So now if we look at the numbers between the controller and the recorder, we'll see that they, uh, they see, seem very, fairly similar. And let me grab this thermocouple and drive the temperature up. So now we're up around 92, and you'll see that that's following along with just a little bit of a time delay because, we're again, we're only scanning once a second. So now we've seen uh, a live demonstration of how to configure and uh, transfer data between two different units using Modbus TCP. So now we're going to look at the uh, R Modbus RTU connection between this uh, Rockwell uh, Emerson uh, Rock 800 and uh, our Yokogawa uh, EJX 910 controller uh, pressure transmitter that's up here. Um, we will uh, first look at the configuration in the Rock 800. And the Rock 800 has a similar configuration to what we had uh, on the recorder. Uh, we go into the COM port and we set the RS-45 communication port. And we see that that is set to 19.2K. Uh, the uh, parity is even. It's eight data bits and one stop bit. We have some other settings here, key on delay, key off delay. And then down here we, uh, we, decide, we uh, selected Modbus Master. And uh, also in the rock you have uh, a Modbus configuration menu. And there again we're gonna go down to the RS-45 port and we see that uh, we have some general settings here. Most significant byte first, RTU mode. Uh, slave mode is not uh, changeable. Event logging is enabled. Master mode is start polling, start, starting request one, number of request three, timeout of two, and retries four. Continuous polling is enabled. We have a table where you can set scaling values. There's a, a master table where you set the RTU address. In this case, um, we have two different devices connected. We have the uh, um, EJX910, and we also have a uh, Rotomass uh, flow meter connected. But we'll see here that the uh, port here that's connected is set for RTU address 4 is the EJX 910 and uh, it's a type, it's function code 4 and uh, slave registers 1, we're only going to move 1, uh, we're going to go from the register number 400, oh no, the slave register is 
one. Uh, we're, gonna, we're going into master register 400 and we're going to move eight registers. And uh, we can look over here and there's some additional information. We're going to go from register 400 to 407. And uh, I'm not sure what these settings are. These are some Rockwell settings. Um, so that each, as I said, each device has its own specific requirements. So now let's go back and look at the, uh, <coughs> the live data that we're seeing. And uh, this window here is the, uh, the live data coming through from the EGX 910 pressure transmitter. And uh, this data only updates about every 15 seconds, so you see it, uh, see it uh, there. It seems to be fixed, and uh, it will suddenly change. So right now we're reading a differential pressure of 0 0.04 inches of water. But if I come over to the, to the pressure transmitter and put my finger over the port and compress it, if you watch the display, you'll see now, okay, it's gone up to four, five inches of water. It switches, uh, automatically switches what it's displaying. So these are some of the parameters that we're looking at. So we have around six or seven inches of water. And uh, if we go back and look at the display on the, on the Rockwell, we see that we, we have uh, also 6.7 inches of water. And now as I let go, it goes back down. So this is how Modbus is configured and set up <clears throat> on the uh, using the Rockwell uh, and the EJX 910 controller uh, pressure transmitter.